I bought the new PlayStation 5 Slim, Sony's latest console that makes the PS5 a little bit smaller, but also more expensive at the same time. I'll explain that in this video. Okay, so I have illegally got this console into the UK. They're only available in America, and I've had to ship it in through some dodgy people, and we've got one right here. I'm so hyped. FBI, open up! With that came a bit of a premium on the price. This thing cost me around £800, which is double the cost of a standard PS5 Slim. But it's worth it, mate, look at that, it's sick. This actually looks way smaller than the product box. The, the pictures online make it look like the PS5 Slim isn't actually that slim compared to the regular one. So I'm quite hyped to see what happens right here. So this isn't the Modern Warfare 3 bundle. Unfortunately, it's just a standard one. I, I, I need to actually buy Modern Warfare 3. We'll maybe do that in this video. But, oh, I hate these PlayStation flaps. There we go, gorgeous job, straight out. Jobs are good and nice. Yes, yeah, so as I was saying, this isn't the PlayStation 5 Modern Warfare 3 bundle. There's a little promo at the moment where you get a bundle with Modern Warfare 3 for like roughly the same price, which is quite a good deal to be fair. This is just a standard edition from the USA. We have an American plug right here, so I'll have to get a UK plug in order for this to work. Fundamentally, everything's pretty much the same with this PS5. You get the exact same controller. Uh, is this just your standard DualSense controller? Nothing's changed here other than probably the serial number on the back. You know, the first versions, I think it was the 1A controllers had issues with stick drift after you know, basically a few months of use. Those are fixed with the 1B controller, so that's a 1B, which is good. You then have your standard uh, other accessories, a HDMI 2.1 cable and also a Type-C charging cable for your controller, which is brilliant. And inside of this box right here, we should have the main event, which is the PS5 Slim. I can't believe we actually managed to get one. I, they, they're not available in the UK until next year. So we're like two months ahead of the ball here. And this, this looks titchy witchy. Hold on, hold on. It's not quite as small as an Xbox Series S, but it's, whoa! It is actually smaller. I thought it was gonna be, oh, actually it's quite tall when you stand it up, but s slim wise, yes. It is slim, you'd hope it would be. So this is the disc edition right here. I didn't buy the digital edition. Main reason is, I'll explain in a moment, but you have to buy the disc drive separately and it basically costs more money, which is a little bit daft. But this right here is the disc edition and it looks absolutely stunning. It's got like a glossy design on the top, which is quite stylish. And it's a much more squared off design as well. It's not as rounded as you could say the standard PS5 looks like. So this is what it looks like next to a standard PlayStation 5. This is a, a digital edition PS5. Uh, it's got the white console plates on. My disc edition one's got the blue plates on. So um, I, you know, I'll, I'll use the same color so it is identical as possible. So you can see really it's not massively smaller. It's not as tall by I'd say like maybe five centimeters. It's, it's a little bit smaller and then obviously it's a little bit skinnier, but when you really factor in that disc drive, and if you had a disc edition, it's kind of the same width really, other than this center column is just much more narrow. Bizarre, bizarre one. I don't know how I feel about it. Now there are some major changes to the front IO on the console because it is slimmer. On the standard PS5, you have both a type C and a type A USB port, whereas this one has two, Type-C ports. I personally think this is a little bit better because obviously you've got a Type-C for charging the controller. And then you can also use the other front port for like a USB expansion drive. So you can store some games on there, play some PS4 games on there, store some next-gen games that you can transfer onto the internal storage. And while we're on the topic of the internal storage, things here have drastically improved over the normal PlayStation 5. In fact, up to one terabyte of internal storage, which has been increased from, I think it was 825 gigabytes that was on the other PlayStation 5, but once you had the operating system on there, it was down to like 666 gigabytes. It's not really much space once you literally had Call of Duty on there, and then maybe two other games that a push you, you were sort of tapped out. So this will hopefully allow you to have maybe two or three extra games on the console, which I think will be more than enough for most people. Ports on the back of the console are exactly the same. You've got two USB type A's, an ethernet port, and of course a HDMI 2.1 connection, along with a power port. In a moment, we will take this console apart to see what it's like inside, but first, First, let's take a look at the final few accessories included inside of the box. And a huge point of contention is the vertical stand. So on the original PS5, you got this little plastic stand here that enabled you to sit the console vertically or horizontally on its side so it didn't obviously be uneven because it's curved. Whereas with this time around on the PS5, the base console already costs $450, which is 
kind of like more expensive than the PS5 roughly, when you then factor in what it's missing. So this is the only stand that's included, this is a bit of a joke, with the PS5 Slim. This is your horizontal stand, just looks like some dude's 3D printed it in his bedroom. So here there are two little holes that this just clicks into like so, to then level off the console when you place it on its side, like, like that kind of. That's terrible, mate. No way. That, that, that we can't have put that in right. You're telling me there must be another leg. There has to be two legs. There's another two holes here. Where are they, though? They don't seem to be in the box. Are we missing it? Flashback. For this to work. End of flashback. We must be missing a leg. Oh, it's there. Here we go. Right. So there's two legs. Thank goodness, because that was dreadful. So two legs slot into place here. And then the PS5 will sit perfectly. Not the most sturdiest. That's kind of terrible. Look at that wobble, mate. But it'll sit horizontally without any issues. Very similar to... <laughs> that wasn't meant to happen. Didn't scratch anything, though. <laughs> Very similar to how the old stand operated when you would throw this on the side. Pretty cool. However, what it doesn't include is a vertical stand. So if you wish to stand it up, which, let's be honest, this isn't going to damage your console. Just like this isn't going to damage your console if you put it like this. Sure, it's a little bit uneven. It could get knocked over, but like, let's be honest, that's not, this isn't going to blow up the console. I've seen people freak out in the comments like, you haven't got it on the vertical stand, mate. And you're like, and? Who cares? Unless your dog's going to knock it over if you've got a dog, there's no stress. But this right here probably is sturdy enough with the disk drive, let's be honest. Like, Come on, that's not too bad. But if you do want the actual vertical stand, so you know your warranty, you know, don't take what I say, some guy on the internet. But um, you can get an additional stand for $30, which then obviously takes this nearer to a $500 console. If you are gonna buy a PS5 Slim, it makes sense to purchase the disc edition for two factors. Firstly, the games are cheaper. You get absolutely ripped off on the Sony store when you buy digital only games. So if you've got an all digital console, basically the only way for you to get game codes is on the PlayStation store properly uh, without buying accounts and stuff like that on like dodgy websites, which then means like Assassin's Creed might be 80 pounds or 60 pounds on the PlayStation store, but then 20 pounds on a disc on Amazon, which is obviously much cheaper. So you can get like three games, the price of one without you having to wait around for Black Friday deals, uh, summer sales, spring sales, and stuff like that. So that gives you more flexibility. You can also use it as a DVD player if you've still got Blu-rays for whatever reason. But also, it's cheaper to buy the console as one unit with the disk drive already attached because you then have to buy the disk drive as a separate add-on, which is cool that you can do that on the new Slim model. You know, a lot of people would have liked that about the digital, but it is like a further $85, I believe, but in the UK, this isn't me doing the currency conversion wrong. It's actually more expensive in the UK for some reason. In the UK, it's almost £120 for the add-on. If you wanted to buy this disk drive separately, it's like £120, something ridiculous. The UK seems to have a higher price for whatever reason. That is from the official PlayStation blog. That's not me getting the conversion rates wrong and being an absolute dork when it comes to maths. Uh, that's roughly what it's at, which is crazy. At that point, you're spending almost £600 on a PlayStation 5 Slim. And the whole point of a Slim model is to be cheaper than the OG model. So people want, it's more accessible to people, but also the console's like three, four years old. So the hardware is cheaper for them to produce and they can also produce at scale much more efficiently. So they can make it smaller, they can make it cheaper, and then more people can purchase a new generation console. Whereas this is like the first time ever in history where the slim model is basically more expensive than the fat model that its predecessor. So as promised, we're going to take a look at what's underneath these console covers and see how different it is. So the way you take these console covers off is much different to the regular fat PlayStation 5. You have to uh, take them off from the sideways rather than just peeling the top cover off and it popping. They, they also come off in multiple different parts. So basically you like lift this up and sort of sl like slide it away that way rather than lifting and sliding down. Not a huge problem. They just come off in multiple parts now. So it's a little bit less efficient. You've got to take four segments of the console up, uh, off in order to access areas. But as you can see, the PlayStation 5 Slim still retains the feature of the expandable external storage. So you can add an NVMe SSD drive into this little expansion bay here. Up to eight terabytes now as well is supported in the latest uh, software update on the PlayStation 5 console. So you can go absolutely crazy with your game library on an NVMe SSD drive. You can play all of your next generation titles directly off that drive as well. So you don't need to transfer them back and forth with an external hard drive, for example. So this works super great. It's great to see that even on a smaller package, they've still managed to retain this key feature 
of a PlayStation console. When it comes to the other console covers, they also all just peel away with sort of like different clicking mechanisms. And then you have the whole carcass of the entire console. You can actually see once naked, you can actually see how thin and slim the console is. Here you can see how the detachable disk drive will operate as well when they release these accessories. So they literally just screw in with three screws. You can take this on and off. I guess you could even turn your disk edition into a digital edition if you really wanted to and make it super slim and skinny with some different console cover plates. PlayStation have announced that they will be releasing console cover plates just like they did in the past, the different color console plates you can purchase. Those will also be coming out for the PS5 in their own variations of colors, so it'd be exciting to see what they look like. Now, I'm not a hater on the PlayStation 5 Slim. I think this console's absolutely beautiful. I think it's super cool that they have actually released a console before Xbox. This came out of nowhere, this release. They just absolutely, they just dropped it. They're like, boom, we're dropping a PS5 Slim this Christmas, guys. Go out and buy it. Whereas Xbox, they've only just done a black edition of the Xbox Series S, so there isn't any sign of a Slim model of the Series X coming until probably next year. So I think it's a bit of a power move by Sony to drop this console so soon when they really didn't need to. They could have held off a year of launching the slim model if we're all honest and we would have all still been happy. Still most people struggle to get stock on the fat one. And I will be doing a full in-depth review. This is just my unboxing first impressions. If you want to see my full review after I test this thing out for a week or so, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see me test some of Sony's other latest releases, including the PlayStation Portal, you should check out this video next. And as always, thank you so much for watching.